If you don't give me an explanation, I'll give you an explanation. Has been a popular phrase on the Chinese internet since 2008. As we enter 2023, local governments in China are pushing for reforming employee healthcare. It has led many Chinese to ask, "Where did my money go?" They are demanding answers from the government. After bureaucratic responses from the authorities, a lot of people have decided to give the government an answer, namely to opt out of social security. The so-called social insurance in China includes medical, pension, unemployment, maternity, and work injury insurance, also known as five insurances in one fund. Enterprises and companies pay a statutory percentage of social insurance for their employees, while employees pay a certain percentage of their own wages. On February seventeenth, twenty twenty-three, the topic "What happens if you don't pay the five insurances in one fund?" sparked a heated discussion on China's Weibo social media platform. And was once the number one trending topic. Many people indicated that they would not pay, and some said they would surrender their insurance. The debate about surrendering the current insurance or not paying into Social Security insurance originated from the Communist Party's medical insurance reform that began in February this year. As of February first, Wuhan City, Hebei Province, implemented a new employee medical insurance reform program that cuts individual medical insurance benefits for retirees from about five percent of their average basic pension to two point five percent, meaning that the amount credited to their personal account is reduced from two hundred and eighty-six yuan to eighty-three yuan per month, or from forty-two to twelve U.S. dollars. There are more than two million retirees in Wuhan. On February eighth and fifteenth, an estimated one hundred thousand Wuhan retirees and supporters gathered outside the city hall in Jiangshan Park to protest the government's reduction of medical subsidies and increasing the threshold for medical reimbursement. They demand that the authorities cancel the new health insurance measures. Some people kept shouting at the top of their lungs, "Give us back our health insurance money!" Protests against healthcare reform have erupted in other Chinese cities. Many people are 
係啊，坐車好多人啊！好多人啊！呢度啲保中心梅花路啊！看，这家大楼都不让你进，你看，你看对面，你看这里面，都给你粘到这面，你看都粘到高边这面来了，你看。你看一晒衣服，你看到这里，又到道边哈。哎呀，是这样式，你看，都密密麻麻的，根本看不见。The retirees sang the familiar song, the Internationale. No more traditions change shall bind us, arise ye slaves, no more enthrall. The earth shall rise on new foundations, we have been not, we shall be all. Arise ye wretched of the earth, for justice thunders condemnation, a better world's in birth. These are retirees from An Steel Group, a large steel company in Liaoning Province, who went to the city to protest against the shrinking of their medical insurance. Again, the police were present. The massive protest by retirees has been called a gray-haired revolution by some overseas Chinese media. A citizen of Wuhan told the overseas Chinese media that she had never seen such an awakening and unity of the people in more than 70 years, when tens of thousands of people came out to protest against the Chinese Communist Party or CCP. China's official media came out first, trying to replace the concept of medical insurance and brainwash the public. The People's Daily quoted experts as saying on February 16th that healthcare reform is about benefiting those most in need. The newspaper reported that some people believe that the money in individual accounts belongs to the individual, which is a conceptual misunderstanding. The money in individual accounts is legally a health insurance fund, which is managed by the government. But when it comes to their own personal interests, the public isn't buying it. Back in 2005, the CCP government published the decision of the State Council on the establishment of the basic medical insurance system for urban employees. The decision document clearly mentioned that the principal and interest of individual accounts belong to individuals and can be carried forward for use and inherited. It also states. The basic medical insurance fund is included in the management of the special account of the treasury and used exclusively for the purpose, and may not be encroached upon or misappropriated. So the public is asking loudly, "Where did our money go?" On February 25, 2023, China's Medical Insurance Bureau responded to the question of where the funds for the current health insurance reform went. Some people had questions about the reduction of the individual accounts of employees' medical insurance after the reform. 
In response, the person in charge from the China Medical Insurance Bureau said that the current medical insurance reform was meant to provide financial support for general outpatient reimbursement by adjusting down the proportion of unit contributions and coordinated funds transferred to individual accounts. The funds are panned, moving horizontally, and used entirely for outpatient coordination reimbursements, that is, to meet the needs of the majority of participants, especially retirees, for reimbursement of general outpatient expenses. The official explanation sounded rather technical and difficult to understand. However, the public still gets it. The general idea is that this health insurance reform is to use part of the surplus from individual accounts to meet the growing demand for public health care. This, of course, angered the protesters because the reform reduces the amount of money returned to individual accounts by two-thirds, i.e. the amount credited to individual accounts each month is reduced by two-thirds. Also, in the cities where the health insurance reform is currently implemented, the civil servant's health insurance isn't affected. As such, people believe that in actuality the government has taken away their savings in the name of reform. Many have wondered if it's due to the zero-COVID policy over the last three years that has accelerated the shortfall in health insurance and drained local finances. Netizens weighed in, leaving comments like, It's hilarious. What the heck is panning? Moving horizontally. The money in my personal account. Don't I know how to use the money to buy medicine? It has long been stipulated that earmarked funds mustn't be misappropriated. If you have taken it for epidemic prevention, so be it and admit it. You can't just take my money while still making me feel grateful for it. It's insulting my intelligence. It is clear that our money has shrunk, but they have to continue to fool people. Once or twice might work, but after a few times, no one will believe them. Although the communist authorities didn't disperse people by force or make mass arrests during the protests, the retaliation began right after. A retired woman in Guangzhou who faced threats from three police officers at her door gave a textbook speech that eventually resonated with the young officers who treated her accordingly. Why is it okay for the government to deduct 320 yuan from us? The money is what we are entitled to when we save money to buy medical insurance. It is our private property. So why should our private property be deducted when we bought medical insurance? The state issued a document stating that the personal fund of medical insurance, if the money is accumulated, if you are lucky and have no serious illnesses, and if the money is not used up after your death, it can be left to the next generation as an inheritance. This is how the national policy was written, and you should all know it. The government has deducted two-thirds of our private property. The government deducted our money in the name of mutual aid. So I would like to know, where is the money going? Do we, the people, have the right to oversee it? The right to be informed? There's no such thing. The government won't tell us where it's going. Just like this time, there's no hearing about it or consultation. The government just deducted the money without consulting us. So we are firmly against it. We are already at the bottom of the pile. Our wages are already the lowest. You all know how much civil servants get paid. At least 1,000 or 1,100 US dollars to start. We save money to pay for the social security. Currently, we can collect a pension for the first year. Only 187 US dollars a month. I can show you my pay stub. Not everyone is paid so little, but we are at the bottom of the ladder. We are the kind of participants who have flexible employment. I know people who start at over 1,000 US dollars and some who start at over 1,500 or 3,000. The pension is already very unfair, but now they want to squeeze two-thirds of our low income. This is robbing us, stealing the money from us, the people. Tell me, is this reasonable or unreasonable? Then, of course, we have to take this issue. I'll tell you the truth, little beauty and two little handsomes. I tell you, listen carefully. I, what job I was in before? I used to be a social insurance collector under the social insurance board. I worked in the Huayu building. You know what that building is, right? That building is the social insurance office, right? I'm a levying officer, so you should not think that you have an iron rice bowl. There's no such thing. 
When I was a levy collector in the Social Insurance Bureau, I never dreamed that when I retired, I would have to defend my various benefits and my medical insurance premiums. I can say that my today is your tomorrow. You should not think that being in the system means that you have an iron rice bowl. Not necessarily. After three years of epidemic, the country is now in financial difficulties, and the government has no money. Have you heard the news? In many places, even the salaries of civil servants are being reduced drastically, and in some places, they are not even paid for several months. So what you have now is not an iron rice bowl. Today we are defending our rights. For what? Not only for us, but also for you. We are cutting through the thorns to create a road for you. We are pioneering with blood and tears and sweat. If we can make it on this road, it means that your road will also be open. In the future, you won't need to struggle like us. The policewoman said that the government's policy of shifting funds to those in need, such as hospitalization, was well intentioned. The retired woman told the young people that because only a small portion of the population was hospitalized for serious illnesses, it should be covered by those funds from the national treasury and not diverted from the funds that were supposed to belong to the general public. The government is not transparent and has lost a lot of money in the three years of the epidemic, and the public has no way of knowing where their health insurance money has been diverted. We don't know who these few people are. We don't know where the money is going, whether it's going to subsidize the gap in nuclear acid testing, or whether it's going to subsidize the big hole in the Fengshan hospitals. Now that many of them have been built and dismantled, is it a waste of money? The money should have come from the national treasury, but now you're taking it out of the medical insurance of the people at the bottom. This is a wasteful act of the people's money. In the end, the retired woman said it was understandable that the police officers were following the orders of their superiors to perform their duties. But even a soldier can raise his gun up an inch for the sake of others and for his own future. The police officers decided not to harass the woman. Well, okay, but you have to follow the law to defend your rights. Okay, let us understand each other. Okay, I got your notice. This is why on February 17th, the topic "What happens if you don't pay the five insurances in one fund?" sparked a heated debate on Weibo, China's social media platform. Netizens commented, "After this incident in Wuhan, many people understand that medical insurance is a dark box, and the rules can be changed at any time, and it's very unfavorable to ordinary people." The amount of money you will be getting back in a few decades is an unknown quantity. The biggest problems are: first, there was a lack of confidence in future economic development and personal income stability. Second, there are frequent changes in policy and the propaganda by the experts and the media, and a decline in confidence in the stability of policy and the credibility of social security. The consequence, due to lack of honesty and credibility, is people no longer trust. Despite warnings from China's Social Security Administration itself and through the media that if one opts out of the Social Security benefits after several years of payment, it means losing more than gaining because one can only get the personal portion, losing what is paid in by the employer. People understand that losses are incurred, but many of them are still determined to opt out. The reasons for it are twofold: one is the fear of changing the rules overnight, and the other is that they can't afford the payment. As early as 2014, the official media released the information that 38 million people in our country had given up paying Social Security insurance premiums. By 2020, the number of employed people nationally were about 750 million, but the actual number of people who paid Social Insurance regularly didn't reach the full coverage. In recent years, more people have given up their insurance and stopped making payments. My friend has opted to do so. Why? One of the reasons is that they can't afford it and have to cancel the Social Security. In recent years, many people have become unemployed for various reasons. Even if they are not unemployed, their company's profitability has been greatly affected. Moreover, many people have mortgages and car loans. Do you dare to stop payments for those mortgages and car loans? If you stop, you will receive a lot of collection calls and even court summons. In this case, the money deducted from Social Insurance becomes a straw that's life-saving. 
The only thing that can be cut off or stopped is social insurance. Another is the unstable work, unstable income, many flexible employment, such as odd jobs, self-media, and construction site migrant workers. These flexible employment has accounted for 10.3% of our normal employment population, reaching 200 million people. Along with the gray hair revolution, news of extending the retirement age to 65 is making many young people worried in China. According to the CCP's previous regulations, men can receive Social Security upon reaching the age of 60 and women at 55. On January 29, 2023, the Chinese government released a report saying that the CCP would soon implement a gradual delayed retirement program and that the 20th National Congress and the Central Economic Work Conference at the end of 2022 both made clear requirements that the program could be announced in 2023 and formally implemented in 2025, with men and women retiring at the same age of 65 by around 2055. A number of netizens said that recently too many people have surrendered their insurance from the Social Security Bureau. Long lines of people are seen in its hall. A Weibo account named Hunan Little Sister posted on February 20th, I've made up my mind. I really don't want to continue paying Social Security. I have a friend in the Social Security Bureau. She said recently there has been an unusual phenomenon. A lot of people are consulting on specific matters of opting out of Social Security and most of them are self-employed and flexibly employed. Most of them have paid for less than five years, and they are the most determined to leave. She said, If you really want to delay retirement, a person who starts paying into Social Security when he or she joins the workforce at age 25 and retires at age 65 will have to pay for 40 years, a conservative estimate of 400,000 yuan or about 58,000 US dollars. A pension of about 2,000 yuan or 288 US dollars would take at least 17 years to get the principal back to the age of 82. Nowadays, work is stressful, business is tough, many people work early in the morning and have to pick up and drop off their children at school, take care of the elderly's health, they are exhausted, their bodies are not properly cared for, they are in a state of sub-health, how many of them can live until they are 82? Artificial intelligence, chat GPT, everyone has heard of it, right? Imagine in another 30 years, you can't compete with young people in overtime, you can't compete with robots in production, and maybe you'll be fired when you're 50 and 60. When the time comes to find a new job, imagine which company is willing to hire a 50-year-old, 60-year-old. So I plan not to pay Social Security. Instead of facing all sorts of uncertainties in the future, I'd rather seize what I can see at the moment, and if retirement is really delayed, then I'm not going to pay Social Security. As you can see, the Chinese opting out of social insurance are actually the people coming to their senses. After the white paper revolution and the gray hair movement, Chinese people have gradually seen the true face of the CCP and don't trust it anymore. A government that lacks the contractual spirit and integrity will face more and greater risks.